It all started when I took a one-way ticket to Japan. I knew I was in for a treat. I just had no idea what kind of treat. Packing my bags as well, somewhat interesting. Tricky. Complicated. I needed to pack for cold climate, but also hot climates. Anyway, I managed to get the shit done. I packed my bags and I headed straight to the airport. Little did I know that this would be a huge shift for me. But we'll come back to that. My journey to Japan was long. Really, really long. Interesting, but fucking long. And you know when you start these traveling kind of trips, it's like everything and anything that can go wrong will go wrong. It was the last leg of my journey and I had to get from China to Japan. And well, I thought it was pretty plain sailing until I had to get my transfer from Beijing airport to Beijing airport. Yep, that's right. I had to get myself from one side of Beijing to the other side of Beijing. How hard could that be? <laughs> Little did I know that this taxi that I was about to jump into was going to make my journey a lot more complicated. I think my taxi driver is drunk. Falling asleep at the wheel in the middle of the lane. Great ride then. Jesus Christ. I had five hours to get myself from one side of Beijing to the other side of Beijing. It normally takes two hours maximum. But on this occasion, one thing that I didn't factor in was getting in a drunk taxi driver's car. And yes, it was probably one of the longest journeys I've ever had to endure. That's right, he is asleep whilst driving a car. Hey, wake up. Wake up. We were on the motorway heading to Beijing's airport and well, the situation didn't get any prettier. This was only scratching the surface with what actually happened. He was putting our lives in danger and other road users. I would have to poke and shower him. Oi, wake up. Wake up, what are you doing? We would veer left and right, constantly taking wrong turns. This man was clearly sleep deprived. Not only that, I was convinced he'd been drinking. Bad driving. Look at this now. Hey. Yeah. On the road, please. It actually ended up in him getting arrested because he assaulted me. I made it to the airport in one piece, even though that was probably one of the most horrid journeys of my life. I had to give a quick statement to the police, and well, I managed to run through security and board my flight in the nick of time. <laughs> anyway, Japan. This place, I've always wanted to go. Heading to Japan was truly the start of stepping out of my comfort zone. I had four weeks to explore this beautiful country, and there were so many takeaways. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Life's short, so you've got to take the risks. It's so easy to just continuously coast in the comfort lane. And you know what I said at the beginning of this video about this being a big shift for me? Well, it has been. And this is only a small part of a much bigger story. Maybe the taxi driver was a good insight to, you know, really truly take me out of my comfort zone. Veer left and right and switch lanes. <laughs> I was put in a really uncomfortable situation, yet I've learned not only about myself, but also how to deal with these things in the future. You see, I set out on this trip with a really, really foggy brain. I had no idea who I really was, and well, that's the reason why I ended up coming on this trip. It was to sort of find myself. What I'm trying to say is, it does take new experiences and weird situations to really push yourself. And Japan was incredible. It was beautiful. I had so much fun with my friends and it was exactly what I needed at the time. But it wasn't enough. And that's why I got on another plane to Delhi. 